So onwards with our sort of Shakespearean introduction. Um, I wanted to do a quick, you know, uh, introduction to the drama during the, the Renaissance in Europe because uh, Shakespeare was uh, mainly a playwright, so he wrote plays for the theatre. So let's talk a bit about that. I think we're quite used to, you know, in our Western society today to talk about novels when we talk about fiction. Uh, it's a very, you know, popular and common form of fiction. But we have to remember that the Renaissance, um, the novel isn't really established yet. And, you know, most people still can't read by themselves and the book printing is, is, is relatively new. So there are other types of fiction that's more, you know, dominating and uh, poems, for instance, and also uh, the dramas. Um, if you look at different countries in Europe, it's, it's quite different how the drama develops, but it's sort of general interest in the way uh, that we mentioned before, the ancient Greeks wrote their plays, their tragedies and, and comedies, which was, you know, this is a very big part of, of ancient Greek literature. So people were inspired by that. These plays were translated into, you know, different European languages and, and performed on stage. And authors around Europe wrote uh, plays very much inspired by this, you know, these old texts. So it was a great inspiration uh, to, to, to a lot of people. Uh, it's also uh, differences uh, where the theater existed. Uh, in some countries, um, the plays were, were mostly performed at court. In, in France, for instance, they did a lot of, of uh, theatre theater, uh, performances uh, at court. So it was really only for, you know, for the higher classes, uh, those plays. Uh, and in other countries, like England, for instance, where oh, Shakespeare lived, coincidence, uh, the theatre was in theory open for everyone. You know, we're going to talk a bit about that later on. Uh, there was a kind of Italian uh, form of theatre that's very much influential uh, in, in Europe during the Renaissance, and it's called Commedia dell'arte. I don't know the Italian pronunciation, um, and it's uh, it's based a lot of these archetypical characters. Um, so if you were a good Commedia dell'arte actor, you could play the same character basically your whole career. Um, and it was also built a lot of improvisation and, you know, it's comedy, it's comedy for the people. Uh, and these plays were often performed um, at markets and festivals and, you know, very common feasts like, like that. Uh, and this kind of quite burlesque humour uh, was an influence on, on the Renaissance drama. Uh, another influence on, on the Renaissance drama is, of course, the, the Middle Ages, uh, uh, the theatre from the Middle Ages. Uh, and that's basically the sacral kind of theatres, for, for instance, mystery plays. These were plays that the church, you know, presented. Uh, and they were, of course, also uh, still <laughs> alive during the Renaissance and, and, and inspiration. Um, and then, you know, the third form was the ancient Greeks plays. So we have ancient Greeks plays, we have uh, the plays from, from the Middle Ages, the sacral plays, and also this Italian form of, of Commedia dell'arte. These are sort of the main influences in, in the Renaissance drama, uh, which were all, by the way, uh, played in, in the common tongue of the language so that people would actually understand. Uh, this might sound, you know, sort of, well, of course, but uh, the Middle Ages is a time period very dominated by Latin because that was, you know, the common tongue of the church. But if you weren't a clergy or priest or something like that, you, you didn't know Latin, so you were sort of excluded. But during the Renaissance, the common tongue is sort of tongues of Europe are sort of spreading more and more. So this is where we find uh, the drama during this time period and onwards to part three, my friends.